In the news this week, prank gone wrong, a political joke taken too far, an exclusive report. The clash in Hong Kong continues as it gains further international attention. Jobs at risk, employment in danger from automation in West Coast Task Force freight management plans. Plus part two of the climate change interview series on Western Perspective, that's coming up. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lung and Danielle Staniskov. Good evening. A recent livery spotting of a Chinese police vehicle around Perth, many say it provokes fear within the Chinese community. We explore this further with an exclusive on-camera interview and reaction. For Taylor Hanna explores how this prank reveals a much bigger problem. What does this vehicle look like to you? This seemingly insensitive joke gone wrong has increased suspicions and fear within the local Chinese community. Terry reported the vehicle to police after sighting it in Cannington and said it's identical to a real Chinese police car featuring Chinese characters on the bonnet and public safety written on the sides. They are in fear at the moment and they are worried they are being spied for, for supporting the protest in Hong Kong. That fake police car creates fear. So we have to defend our freedom from fear. So we have to say something and do something about it. Political expert Dr Ian Cook says the prank has a hidden implication on Australian society. And there were sort of real questions around the sensitivities associated with the, the people involved with this sort of incident. I mean, at one level, yeah, you can see that they thought this was a sort of funny joke, I suppose. Uh, but for, for others, you know, it was a case of, yes, they are carrying sort of baggage from their homelands. That means they are responding to things that in Australia, maybe, I guess, we'd respond to a little differently. So is this prank illegal or not? What do you make of that? It seems very strange and I'm yet to get advice from police on it. WA police spoke to the driver of the vehicle who stated he purchased the decals online and placed them on his car as a joke. The man has since removed them from his vehicle. Questions remain over why this matter took so long to be handled. Taylor Hanna and Ivan Leung for WA MN News. Hong Kong has reached a tipping point following waves of unrest and violent clashes in the city, with demonstrators vowing to continue until the government heard their demands. China has warned it will not sit by and watch the city descend into chaos. Gordon Choi reports from Hong Kong. The anti-extradition amendments protests continue this week. After police shot blind a female protester last Sunday, millions of protesters gather at Hong Kong International Airport to express their discontent towards police brutality and called for international support towards the movement in Hong Kong. The operation of the airport was paralyzed and flights got cancelled. Protests at the airport continued on Tuesday, but chaos happened that this time two mainlanders were being beaten and detained by protesters. In view of this, the airport authority applied for injunction to forbid an authorized assembly in the airport and was approved by the court organize an assembly in Central to call for international support, especially from the UK and the US. They urged the UK to declare that China has violated the Sino-British Joint Declaration and asked the US to sanction Hong Kong government officials who betrayed Hong Kong. On Saturday morning, 20,000 teachers participated in a march to urge the government to respond to the protesters' demands. Chief Executive Terry Lam still haven't responded to the people's demands. As we have all heard from the spokesman of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office, um, the central government is still confident that I myself, as the government of the Hong Kong SAR, together with the police force, that we are still capable of resolving this crisis. The Civil Human Rights Front is organizing a protest to, to urge the government to respond to the five demands and stop police brutality. However, this rally is limited to an assembly here in Victoria Park. We are closely monitor the situation as the demonstrators are sure to be filling up this park at the nearby streets. Gordon Choi, WAMN News, Hong Kong. Young Western Australians could be left with fewer jobs in Westport Task Force freight management plans, with automation potentially featuring in construction. Westport says it's trying to lessen the risk with the issue to feature in discussions as it released its short list of options this week. Nelson Liu has this exclusive interview with Westport Chairwoman Nicole Lockwood. 
is automation going to be an issue in the whole process? So really what we're looking at is at least a 10 year time frame for delivery of any new infrastructure. So in that time frame, as we've seen in all industries, there's a huge amount of change. And with that change comes opportunity, but also requires um, a transition plan for any current jobs that may change as a result of a new um, solution. So that, that's really the challenge for us now, is to look at how we make sure that that transition can happen. Are there plans for automation at this point? So the trends around the world in ports are certainly to move to more automated practices. Um, so that is something that in the design and construction phases, should the project go ahead, they will be considered. Do you think it's going to be affordable for the next generation? So part of the, the question is about financing and funding. So that's part of what we'll work on with government in the coming months. Um, and it is about making sure that whatever we put forward um, ha doesn't put any further cost impost on the end user. So that's some work we'll continue to do. And finally, where does the West Port Task Force head, head to from here? So we will now go through a more detailed analysis of the five, as I said, looking at timing and staging as well. And by the end of the year, we will recommend to government a preferred option for their consideration. Following last week's Family Law Reform Forum in Mandurah, One Nation MP Colin Ticknell is optimistic that positive changes can come about. With family law being one of the biggest problems the Australian society is facing, on average three men commit suicide per day and one woman is murdered every week due to these issues. There are currently more than 21,000 family law cases backlogging the court system. Mr Ticknell is hopeful that his major party counterparts will help tackle this issue. Well, I've had these discussions in state parliament, there's been some interest, both from the uh, Attorney General and other members of parliament, so I'm confident that they will want to uh, make a positive contribution to West Australian society. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully we will lead the way and force the federal government to listen to my federal leader. The last recruitment for Transperth railcar drivers is now open, with new employees being among the first to drive trains for the Metronet Forest Field Airport Link. With only four classes of 15 students over two years, the recruitment process is highly competitive, with Transperth drivers being some of the most highly trained in Australia. Successful applicants will obtain a Cert 4 in train driving after completing 11 weeks of classroom learning, including the theory behind driving rail cars, electrical safety, customer service, signalling and communications. Then another 14 weeks of on-the-job training is done with a driver trainer. It's definitely worth a try. Um, I was lucky and I got in the first go, but there's a lot of people that apply three or four times because it's such a good job. Um, you know, the career prospects are good and um, we're quite stable in our, in our work. An activist group has warned the state government to address climate change now or face rebellion. Extinction Rebellion called on Premier Mark McGowan to act calling it a climate emergency, leading to a rally outside Parliament House on Thursday that resulted in at least four protesters being arrested. The group says Mr McGowan risked failing to act on the emergency after giving him their ultimatum two weeks ago. People are here because they are concerned, they are desperately scared that the serious emergency that's rapidly looming all around us is not being addressed. You're not doing your job. We're here to either make you do your job or do it for you. Six regional towns across the state will be competing for the annual top honours of WA Tidy Town Sustainable Community Awards. There have been strong submissions on seven award categories with six regional overall state title finalists. They include Albany, Bunbury, Esperance, Greenbushes, Kalgoorlie Boulder and ports in South Headland. Those areas have been selected following a visit by the judges. This year the award will be marking its 50th anniversary with the awards to be announced on the 25th of October at the Tidy Town Sustainable Community Awards event in Perth. And that's our news for this week. We have the latest on our website and Facebook page. Until next Sunday after 8, thanks for your company. Good evening. Good night.